Welcome back to my channel guys. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Megan and I'm a travel vlogger. I've been lucky enough to travel to over 20 countries so far. Now today I went on a trip recently to a beautiful place called Mount Cook. First of all, what is Mount Cook? Mount Cook is the tallest mountain that we have in New Zealand. It's located in the South Island of New Zealand, right in the Mackenzie District in the Southern Alps. So we're going to go right into it. So the top five things to do in Mount Cook, starting with number five. So number five is the Hermitage Hotel. The Hermitage Hotel was built in 1884 and was used as a base for climbers who were climbing Mount Cook and also other mountains inside of the National Park. Another fun fact for you guys, because I'm very cold to her today. The Hermitage was building actually for people that was here to discover Mount Cook. So it sounds like just a hotel, but it's been used as history to climb and discover all this area of New Zealand. So you should come and visit. The Hermitage Hotel looks directly onto Mount Cook. So you get this amazing view from the inside of the comfy warm couch inside the Hermitage Hotel. It does get about minus six outside, so it's a great place to be. We woke up to minus six degrees this morning. There was a lot of frost on the ground. <laughs> Anna was a little bit cold this morning. I don't want to go up. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It was definitely minus six last night. This is all just like ice. My windscreen, I'm gonna need, I can't even scratch it off. I'm gonna need like hot water or something to get that off, eh? You can enjoy tea and coffee and even have some lunch like we did and it was absolutely fantastic. Now, when you're in the Hermitage Hotel, you can actually stay there as well. So the prices range from anything from around $175 up to $250. It's a bit pricey, but it's definitely worth the view. Moving on to number four, which is the Visitor Centre. Now you may be wondering why I've included the Visitor Centre in here. Let me tell you, this is no ordinary Visitor Centre. This is the most amazing Visitor Centre I have ever seen in my life so far. When you think of a visitor centre, you think about walking into an old building with a few information pamphlets. Well, think again. Inside the visitor centre here, you walk in and there's this amazing diamond window that overlooks Mount Cook. Now inside the visitor centre, there's all kinds of information about what walks are best for you, depending on your ability. There's some souvenirs that you can buy in there as well. And there's also just general information about Mount Cook National Park, where you can drive to to see different things. If you want to do helicopter rides, you can do. It gives you all the pricing and information in there. The guys are super helpful in there. So anything that you need help with, if you're wanting to climb Mount Cook to just doing the Hooker Valley track, they will help you in there. Next up, number three. Now this is the Sir Edmund Hillary Alpine Centre. Now this is actually located inside the Hermitage Hotel, but on the bottom floor. So for those of you that don't know who Ed is, which I did know before I came here too, he is the most famous New Zealand climber. He did the Mount Everest, and he first used Mount Cook, which we went yesterday, as his base to learn about the trackings to go and do Mount Everest. Let's go meet him. So here is the Sir Edmund Hillary Memorial and this is really beautiful because Sir Ed stands tall and he looks directly over to Mount Cook where he trained and where he found all of his friends and things to climb Mount Everest which was his greatest achievement. Just amazing how he looks over to Mount Cook. He actually stayed here in the Hermitage and this was his base. Now in the Alpine Centre they have everything to do with Sir Ed so you, they have a few interactive things that you can do. They have about Sir Ed's life, about his history, how long it took him to climb, where he trained to. So if you're a Sir Ed fan, I definitely recommend coming here. They even have a life-sized Sir Ed so you can see how you compare. I was a bit shorter than him, so I don't think I'll be climbing Mount Everest anytime soon. Inside the Alpine Centre, they also have amazing documentaries. Now these documentaries range from anywhere within 30 minutes to about an hour and a half. Next up is the Tasman Glacier. Now the Tasman Glacier is absolutely beautiful. I never thought that I would see a glacier. Now when I think about visiting a glacier, I always thought I had to spend heaps of money and go on a helicopter ride. It turns out you don't. So this is really, really accessible to get to from Mount Cook. So you have to hop in the car and it's about a 10 minute drive to the start of the glacier walk. 
Now it's about a 20 minute walk up to the top. There are some steep steps, so just take your time. But when you get to the top, the views are absolutely breathtaking. There's heaps of information up the top on the Tasman Glacier. So this here basically says in 1990, the glacier length was 26 kilometers and it came all the way up to here. But because of global warming, it's now all the way back there and it's lost two kilometers. And they reckon by 2027, it will be at 20 kilometers. So you won't even be able to see this glacier anymore. Goes to show how much global warming is having an impact. Now leading me on to number one, drum roll please. The Hooker Valley Track. Now this is by far the most beautiful walk I have ever been on. And me being from New Zealand, I've seen a lot of beautiful things and traveling the world, but this is definitely up there with my top three things that I have ever done. Through this walk, you will be greeted with pure beauty everywhere you look. You have three swing bridges which you go across and the glacier rivers will flow underneath you. You have the beautiful snow on all of the mountains surrounding you and you get these beautiful pictures like this one with the beautiful reflection from Mount Cook, which is the main attraction of the Hooker Valley Track. So this is bridge number two and this is honestly insane. Check this out. So the Hooker Valley track takes one and a half hours one way, so three hours return. It's completely flat and there's hardly any hills, so it's really accessible for all ages. But a top tip, I would allow between four to four and a half hours for this walk because there's heaps of photo opportunities along the way. And once you get to the end of the walk, which is the Hooker Lake, you can walk around, take photos, enjoy a wee snack or a picnic if you bought one. I'm currently walking on the glacier. Like Look at that. This is the number one thing that I suggest you do in Mount Cook. There are so many things to do in Mount Cook. When people think of Mount Cook, they only go there for the day and I think that's the biggest mistake. I was there for two days and I booked one night in the YHA and that was enough time to see everything in this video. There are other things that you can do as well. You can do helicopter rides and you can walk on the glaciers. Of course, we're getting into the pricier sections now. So you're looking at about four to five hundred dollars to do a glacier walk or a helicopter ride. If that's something you can afford, I totally recommend it. I personally haven't done it, but I will do in the future. That is the end of today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed your top tips for Mount Cook and I hope that you take some tips away for your trip to Mount Cook. This place is honestly unreal and phenomenal. I'm so glad that I went here and it's a highly recommended place to come in the South Island. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I have videos coming out every single Monday. And as always, guys, I'll see you next Monday. Bye.